All right, everybody, um, we are back to our regularly scheduled content. Uh, weird videos about pocket knives, right? Are you laughing with them? Are you laughing at them? Is there a hidden meaning? Now, you know I just released the channel production knife, the stump lifter. Uh, as of the writing of this video, there's about zero left out of a run of 600 because they're sold out. Yay! Now, while that may sound like a bad plug for an unrelated product, I will have you know this video is for another production line from a knife maker, YouTuber, Forge and Fire, er, er, Michael Trolsky of the Trolsky Knives, and the knife is the Mandu, and this is a Blade HQ exclusive just like the Stump Lifter was. Maybe he's on TikTok? I don't know. I don't spend a whole lot of time there. So I make weird videos uh, about pocket knives, and he is a celebrated knife maker, so that's basically the same thing, right? Now, the Mandu summed up in a sentence is henceforth. The Mandu is a non-locking, straightforward pocket knife with a drop point blade and a lightweight and tough handle with steel liners. Okay, I, I jacked that from uh, Blade HQ's website. And while we are pondering that sentence, uh, let's look at the dimensions. Now, non-locking here means a double detent system. Like, would you consider a double detent system a slip joint? You know, they're often described as slip joints. Does it make you mad when someone calls it a slip joint? Would you be less mad if they called it a style of non-locking mechanism for retaining the blade open and closed? You know what? I get it, though. I'm still, I'm still mad we call film photography analog now. Because, you know, uh, if modern photography is digital, then old photography has to be analog. Even though analog does not really describe the processes of a film camera. It's photochemical, goddammit. But the way the image is recorded onto the negative is analogous to a analog waveform. Listen, man, I spent time in dark rooms and art school. I put in the time. You don't tell me nothing. But word meanings change over time, and uh, things get lumped together, you know? If it's in the dictionary, I've lost the war, okay? Now, by my estimation and limited research, the Mandu is the first Trolsky production and folding knife. He makes fixed blades normally. You can go to his website. He's got a lot of very nice-looking fixed blades. And the Mandu is one of his fixed blade patterns. Now, it is a wonderfully classic design reminiscent of the Schillen folders, which are no longer available. And I found out about those after you can no longer buy them. So that tracks with my luck. Uh, and it's based off a traditional Chinese knife pattern. It's a little unclear if the Schillen is the, the first or it is a series. And the Schillen is the, is the only company left or one of the few left doing it. Now, there's a few other makers out there. Uh, Vostede, Fox, Jared Ozer has made at least one custom that kind of follows this look. But the Mandu here is made by Best Tech and comes in a variety of colors here and sells for about $69. Now, I believe these are available in Europe, and I will have a link that place down below. Some people were mad that uh, my knife was, you know, Blade HQ doesn't ship internationally. And having shipped internationally uh, these knives, um, it kind of sucks. Uh, I had one come back. And I had to reship it. Don't know if he's got it yet. Uh, so I get why they don't do it. And I don't really have a presence. So I don't really have much of a presence outside the channel. But, um, you know, I did mail some people. I put I put a post on Instagram. Like, hey, if you're an international. And I got about 10 people. And then the other people complaining, I guess, didn't see the post. But I did mail some to the people who follow me closely. Okay, uh, first up, Blade D2 Stone Wash Finish. It is... Not a smooth stone wash like, say, on my Hawk Mud here or the Lundquist Feist. But it's more of a bead blasted or acid wash texture feel. Almost feels coated and, you know, it matches the liners. It is a flat grind and it is pretty sharp out of the box. I'm <laughs> going to do a little cutting B-roll here. I've, you know, I've had people over the years that are like, well, hey, man, why why do you show yourself cutting cardboard? Why do you show... Why do you show yourself cutting vegetables? We know it's a knife, it works. And other people are like, I didn't see you tested, so how do I know it cuts? Um, I, there's, you can't please everyone, and those two sorts of takes mean that uh, no one seems to agree on what should be in a knife video, but it is B-roll, and it fills the time where I'm talking about stuff not directly related to something I can point to on a knife, like the table toppers. I guess whose version of this would be kind of holding and shaking it repeatedly. You know, you could turn the sound off and you know they're really going in on a good story whenever they're like pop, pop, you know, like rah, rah, repeatedly like holding and using it as an emphasis on their words. <laughs> it's literally just B-roll. Uh, sometimes it's funny B-roll. Sometimes it's sort of unrelated B-roll. It's whatever I have to fill the gap where I'm talking like right now. 
Now, among the influencer circuit, there seems to be strong opinions on the double detents. Uh, I, in fact, I almost called it a lock here. I had to erase my sentence. Think, uh, think of how dumb I'd look if I hadn't erased that sentence and called it a lock. A double detent locking system. It doesn't lock. Uh, now I feel like I'm in the uh, Levin camp of knife nerds. You know him. Sorry, knife nuts, not knife nerds. Like knife nerds is like a whole other subgenre of uh, knife knife people posting. But it was Levin who said they were safe and predictable as long as you're not a simpleton. He didn't say safe and predictable, but he says uh, they're fine as long as you're not a simpleton. When other people are like, I shaved the tips of my fingers off because they weren't paying attention. It's not my problem. Uh, but I was asking about it in the group chat. The way a double detent mechanism works is that the open blade is held into place with the detent, or detents, like also when a knife is closed. Now a detent is a small ball, usually on a lock, that falls into a hole on the knife tang. Now I'm not sure if that little ball is a detent, or the hole is a detent, or it's together, but uh, detent is usually referred to the blade retention when it's closed on most pocket knives. So, since it is primarily used to hold knives closed in a non-locking folder, you will have to have a detent mechanism on either side as seen here. And as the blade opens, the springs machined into the liners click into the holes in the tang. You see them on both sides here and you see them go click whenever it clicks. Hopefully you can see that. Hopefully I have good photography skills here. Now when you close, you apply an amount of pressure on the blade spine and you click it closed. If you do it just right, it'll fall right in there, but otherwise it bounces back a little. Now, like all knives, you need to keep your fingers out of the way when popping it closed, you know, or you can just ease it closed like a grandpa or uh, my daughter who I've taught how to, to close a pocket knife. She just closes it with two fingers. She's not trying to flick it closed all day at her desk. She's somebody that doesn't have enough work to do, not enough emails to send. So, you know, the mindless desk fidgeters might not mind their hands when popping it closed, but that's not my problem. It's not your problem. It's actually their supervisor's and HR's problem. Now you can pop the flipper tab and it's smooth and you need just the right amount of force to close it fully, or you can just ease it close if you can't handle the responsibility of grasping the blade and closing it. Now knives like this shouldn't be considered hard use. However, most pocket knives before the 1980s for over 100 years, I don't know, 200 years, did not lock and it was possible to do things uh, with a knife where, you didn't, where it didn't lock. You had fixed blades and you had slip joints. And I think there was some little liner things there, here and there, but, uh... Now, since there isn't a strong back spring on here, I will not perform my typical batoning antics. You have detents holding it into place, and too much pounding on it is gonna, you know, could ruin the detents. I don't want to do that, okay? This is a cutting your Amazon packages open, uh, cutting rope, stuff like that. You're not pounding it through logs. I mean, you can, but that's up to you, dude. Tab has some jimping on it, but it doesn't seem to wear on the tender fingers of the desk jockey of the email senders. Now the handle, as you can imagine, looks finely sculpted and comfortable, because it is. I love the two-tone micarta blue here. I'm never gonna stop calling it micarta, okay? You know that. I'm not gonna say micarta, okay? I'm pronouncing it like it looks like it's spelled, not like whoever made it decided that I is gonna be pronounced differently. It's not my problem, but it gives you texture and depth. There's a blue and there's a little bit of, I don't know, is that grayish in there? But it kind of goes with the matching hardware the blade finish, the backspacer, the clip, and the liners. It's a nice touch. The rug kind of ties it all together, or the rug being the, the scales. Now, I'm going to assume that since the liners are steel, so is the clip, even though it looks titanium-ish, and a magnet did confirm it is indeed ferrous. Uh, the clip ain't swappable either, no matter how many mean comments you leave under the internet knife videos for, for the guys that make the knives. I'm, oh, why didn't you make it up left-handed? I don't know. Does it mess up the side visually? Uh, Left-handers are too limited of a run. You know, there's, there's those two things. I, I didn't ask him which it was. I wasn't going to bother him with a bunch of questions. He's a much more busy man than I am. Tip up, blade backward in the right pocket. Now, the pocket clip is smooth but tight. If you'd like a looser fit on the clip, you'll need to remove and bend. It's not bad, but... You know, it's like you have the cold steels and the Microtex, and uh, you have this is a little slight, this is less than that. It's not like Spyderco spoon clip in the pocket, which apparently some people hate, and I'm wrong about that opinion, but uh, I like a Spyderco spoon clip, and this is a little tighter than that. It's compact though, and has only a little bit of give. Comparisons. First, let's see it against my only other detent slip joint. Holding, holding holding, mechanism, whatever you want to call it. My brain won't let me call it a slip joint without a bunch of caveats. 
I want to say lock, though. I really want to say lock. That's a word that almost comes out every time when I say double detent. I want to say double detent locking system. But that knife is the Surge Bean. You may notice a similar vibe here. Not the same, but these seem like they belong in the same collection. Action on Surges is also fun. It's a little, you know, little pocket guy. It's so tiny that your fingers usually aren't in the way whenever you try to close it. Uh, how about the Feist XL? You know, this is a Kaiser knife of a Lundquist design. Liner lock here, great smooth action. Best Tech makes the man do, and I believe they also OEM for Winter Blade Co., which are fine knives. Very nice, no complaints. Kaiser's great too, no complaints there. Uh, one more paramilitary two. Should I have used uh, the pair of three because it's a little more size appropriate? Maybe I should have. You can't trust me to make smart decisions though, okay? Wrapping it up. Kind of sounds like something you'd say when you're about to make a bad decision. Thanks to Blade HQ for sending me this for review. These are attractively priced at $69, and hopefully my restraint there makes me seem smart when I said that price. Now that I brought it up though, I'm not smart anymore. As always, you can support my channel by buying through my links below. Now, Teespring, uh, you can also become a patron. Uh, lots of patrons, you know, the usual. Got an uptick after the stump lifter went live, and I really appreciate it. I promise I'm going to stop talking about the stump lifter in the next few videos. What about the movies? What about more? I, I don't know, man. It's not. It's still up in the air right now. Although I was talking to Jack Wolf Knives the other day, Ben. He's like, you need to light. Well, the fire's hot, man. You need to keep it lit. Man, I don't know. That's... The fire, the fire has been gone in my eyes for like uh, 40, 44 years, man. <laughs> oh boy, that's me. Uh, like, subscribe, comment, thanks for watching.